Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to continue on with the linked list. This is the final video for linked list. Then we're going to move on to a different data structure, including stacks, um, which I love. So this is Java with Ali. I am Ali and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please sub um, like, share and subscribe. Um, so I know to make more. Today I said I was going to go through the uh, programs in more detail and walk through the code. So now we are going to have a look at what package it's in. So it's in structures package, <clears throat> lowercase s for packages. We import the no such element exception, which is going to be our throne exception later on. Um, the class name, capital L for list test. And this is the main entry point, which, which is where everything starts the main thread of the program. So here we have a list. When I look at it, it says structures.list.integer, it's integer type. And you can see here that it's um, using the <coughs> integer not int primitive type versus um, reference type because these have to be a reference type with it, this. Um, and it's going to be um, called list. So with our list, then we have our insert at front. So if I go to insert at front, <clears throat> which is in our list.java class, um, and you can see here that it uses a predicate uh, method called is empty. So the is empty then just checks whether um, this object is empty. So we have here, again, our generic type E, um, insert item is empty, first node. And then if we if we read the code this way, which is really useful, I find it very useful that way. <laughs> so if the list is empty, assign the first and last node, um, the new list node that was initialized with insert item, um, so regard assignment operators evaluate right to left. So always think right to left. This is why I started over here to this way. So we have, <clears throat> um, so the last node constructor um, calls the list node, list node even constructor um, to set an instance variable data to refer to the insert item here. Um, and you can see here, insert item is going to be placed into the new list node and then assigned to the last node and first node. So this is because this is the first and last node in the list. So if the list is not empty then, <laughs> um, the new node is linked um, into the list by setting the first node to a new list node here. Um, so when initializing that object with insert item. So let's um, see here. First node, list node. So we have here is list node and here is this node. So if we go to list node, these are the constructors. Uh, if I go wait here, just click on it. Be able to open the decoration. So here's where we had a look at this in the previous program that there are different constructors within um, list node. Here it's just taking one argument and that's the insert item when it's empty. Um, and this is when um, it's not empty. Here we have our list node var one and our variable two. So if I go back here again, you can see here it's taking in the two different elements so this first node and insert node I'll go back to this node again um so it's assigning it to data which is going to be our insert item and it's assigning it to the next node which is going to be our first node <laughs> so our first node becomes our next node <laughs> so that's how our insert at front um is going to operate so it shows a list um, and a new node is inserted front operation before the program links the new node in the list. 
So if I go back to my list test, then it has insert at back. <laughs> so insert at back then also uses the is empty predicate method. So if I click on that, I keep using the wrong keys because I use a different computer at work. Um, so here we have insert at back. And again, it's taking in our insert item. It's going to check this is empty, whether the list is empty or not. Um, and it's also going to, to call upon the two constructors with list node um, as well, except this time we're calling the same constructor here and here. So we're reading it from right to left. We're used to reading our books left to right. So always read this way so you can see which it, what what's going to be put into the memory and put into the, I like to visualize memory as, as boxes, physical boxes. Um, and we'll come to that as well with stacks and stuff that we can, as physical boxes. Um, so we have here, insert at back, which is list node, insert item, assigning it to list node and then assigning it to the first node, last node, this node, last node and first node. And the same here with our um, reading it from right to left. So if if we walk talk through it then, so if the list is empty, assign the first node um, and last node, the new list node that was initialized with insert item. <laughs> um, and so the list node constructor at line here, um, calls a constructor and sets the instance variable data to refer to the ins to refer to the insert item again, same as before, which we have here. Um, and same here with the next node. So if the list is not empty, then it links the new node into the list by assigning to <coughs> last node and last node dot next node, um, the reference to the new list node that was initialized with the search system. So why don't we put in some nice um, print statements here so we can see things within the console. So if I say this dot first node, and if I go to the first node, all we want to, to see is this first <clears throat> node even, but we want to print it out, but we already have a print statement, remember? So we don't actually need to go through it like this at all, but what we can do instead is put in different markers within our code, different breakpoints within our code if we want to as well. So here and here, um, and we can step through our code as well. So that's another way to do it, just to, something to be aware of. Then we have remove from front book. First, we'll go back to list test again. Um, and this is our print here because we skipped this method. I keep, I keep pressing the wrong um, buttons. <laughs> so we have our print um, and again, this is empty. Um, so if it's empty, it prints out that it's empty. Then um, this is our predicate method. We might as well address this first. It's a Boolean, either yes or no. That would, that's kind of what predicate methods mean. Return this dot first node is equal to equal to null. Um, so <clears throat> else then it prints out this name as well. So we have as well our <laughs> for loop here first. Let's look at our for loop. List node variable one is equal to the this first node variable not equal to null variable dot next node and it prints out the data as well and an empty line. So let's run our code again and just have a look first at it printed. So you can see this is our, when we go to list test, minus one, if I open up my console again, 
minus one is inserted at front, printed, inserted at front is zero and printed, inserted at back is one and printed, inserted at back is five and printed. And then we have our removed, but we'll get to the removed in a second once we go through our list of print here as well. So if we go here then, why don't we have a look at this. These are kind of some common things that people do and then they wonder why things won't work. Um, and you can see list is referring to itself here. So then we can just go print. And let's have a look at what happens. So this is our minus one is coming up here as well. So if we wanted to print out, let's say something else, something more um, with our print statement here. So for instance, this line, instead of referring to the method within the method, we wanted to print out this instead. These are just some things that you can think about when you're walking through some of the code because it can be quite um, <laughs> empty list. This sub name is empty, um, but we don't want the we don't want the empty list at all. Why don't we try? And you can see what happens as well. Some of these things are really funny to, when you're working through because it's going to print out the <laughs> the actual reference of the object as well um, so there's just some things that you can kind of think about when you're when you're printing out some stuff and when you're walking through some code as well um, and you'll get more and more familiar with it the more you practice it and stuff so um, you don't want the reference you want the actual um, result to it as well but um, yeah, it's just really funny. So here we have string name is our private instance variable as well. Um, and that's what we're printing out down here, this dot name. But that's being passed in every time that we call our list um, constructor as well. So is it? So we have here our removes then as well. So if I go back to list test and it goes through our try and catch. If you're unfamiliar with try and catch, please check out those videos. Um, there's a try and then there's our no such element exception and it just prints out a stack trace. Um, <clears throat> here it just prints out um, our, an integer removed item. So if I click on removed item, remove from front. So if I click on the decoration for remove from, from front, um, and you can see again, it's a generic type. So it's E, throws, no such exception. Again, using the predicate element, throws the exception, this name plus is empty. Um, and removed item. So if we read it again this way, so Data dot first item, uh, first node is going to be removed if these two, and we use the two equal sign to compare. First node is is equal to or um, last node, then we do this. Else we do this. So you can see then it then it just returns the remove item, and the same goes for remove from back, um, except in the remove from back part, <laughs> which I need to remove these commented lines as well. So, and it uses again our generic collections. So it has our is empty, our removed item, our last node.data, um, it compares the first node and the last node. Um, again, it does an else list node is assigning the first node to the current, um, checks whether it's not equal to, <laughs> assigns the next node to the current node, 
then assigns the current node to the last node, um, and then assigns null to the next node, and then returns the, the removed item. And there you have it. Then it has the catch statement. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you liked it. Please like, share and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more, I'm going to do different data structures. The code is available on GitHub now. The link is below. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching.